Hey guys, Quinn here, Tactical and Practical. Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to take a look at the Miopta Optica 6. This one is the 3 to 18 by 50 millimeters on the objective lens. Um, I am thinking about putting glass on two rifles. My 243 has a duplex reticle that is 40 years old, so I'm going to refresh that and then a, a Franke Momentum Elite. Creedmoor. I thought this scope might go onto that Creedmoor, uh, but then I saw Burris Signature HD has a illuminated Creedmoor um, subtended reticle in the first focal plane, so that's going to go onto that Franke. And then if I keep this Miopta, it's going on the 243. A couple reasons why that is. One thing I'd like to talk briefly about here is reticle and turret selection. Generally. I will never buy a subtended reticle in the second focal plane for a couple reasons. One, the subtensions are only good at max magnification. So on the fly, if you're not at max, you have to do some mental math. It means on a 18 power scope, if you're at 9, your subtensions are double. Now that's pretty easy math, but what if you're at, say, 10 out of 16, right? 5 eighths. Then all of a sudden you've got to do multiplication in your head to understand what your subtensions mean. I never understood subtended reticles that are not in the first focal plane. The other reason is that um, at low power they kind of become worthless. So if you've got a 3 to 18 scope that's subtended and at max magnification your first subtension is 1.8 MOA, which isn't uncommon, right around 2 MOA. Say you're at a third power. Say you're in the field, you've got a medium distant target, and you're at 6x power. That means your subtensions are three times bigger. So your 2 MOA subtension is now 6 MOA, which likely means your point of impact went from 200 yards to 350 yards, which means anything between 0 and 350 yards, you just have to guess between those two subtensions um, or dial. If you've got a dial, then why have the subtensions anyway, right? When we have precise instruments and there's math involved and there is a correct answer, I just don't like a system that is set up for me to use and have to just make an eyeball estimate, best guess chance. I mean, I can do that with, without any help, right? So generally, I want a subtended rifle, a reticle, uh, in the first focal plane. And if it's subtended, I'd prefer really to have capped turrets because I have the subtensions, so I don't need to dial. If I have to dial out past beyond those subtensions, um, I have enough time to take the cap off. That Burris, which we will review, is uh, subtended out to 700 yards. It does have an exposed turret, but at least it pushes the lock, so that's something. So part of the reason I bought this Miopta for that uh, Creedmoor was that the, the MPN, the manufacturer part number, didn't match up to the picture that they had. The picture they had actually showed a um, exposed elevation turret. So if you get one of these, make sure you're getting the correct model that you want. Um, so with, as I said, normally, this is a second focal plane scope. They come in both, first and second, the Miopta's. I don't mind a second focal plane scope on my hunting rifle because then the duplex looks bigger at all ranges when I'm closer in. And typically shots here are 100 to 200 yards-ish. Uh, however, there are occasions where I need to go out further. So with a duplex reticle, I would like the exposed turret because then it's easy to dial for distance. However, the max effective range of a 243 is like 444 yards. That's right at the barrier of a thousand pounds of force. Um, so what I will do is zero the rifle, the maximum point blank range, which for my 243 is like 275 yards, which means my bullet is good out to 320 without dialing. So if I have this scope zeroed to 278, I can just aim dead on at anything from 0 to 320 and pull the trigger. And then if I need to shoot beyond 320, I'll have to take the cap off and dial. So I think this might end up going onto that 243. Part of the reason is the glass quality on this Optica is great. Now we'll get into the scope. It does come with these, um, this lens cover. It's pretty nice. Uh, it does have the adjustable diopter. 
This is the 4C reticle, I think they call it. It's a pretty standard duplex um, with the smaller crosshair on top. It is illuminated, which is an upgrade from the scope that I currently have, which was important to me. Illumination, as often is, is located on the left with an off in between. Not impossible to turn, but there's a little pressure, which is kind of nice. You want to have to intentionally make the turn. Parallax on this thing goes all the way down to 10 yards, which is pretty low, which is nice. And then as you scroll up, you go 20, 30, 50, then 100 in 100 increments, 1, 2, 5, and then up to infinity. Capped windage as well. The caps are nice. They've got kind of a rubberized knurling on them that feels pretty good. Take the cap off. There you go. A little bit of force required, but not so much you have to torque it where you're going to skip clicks if you want to count it. But again, these are caps, so the reticle, um, I'm going to use it for a maximum point blank range as a, as a hunting rifle, and then only dial on a rare occasion. If I really think I had to dial or um, take a shot that was that long, I'd probably be taking that Creedmoor with me instead. Anyway, magnification on this, it's an Optica 6 because it is on there six times magnification uh, setup which means it goes all the way down to 3 times 6 gets you all the way up to 18 magnification knob is smooth there is resistance but it's about the amount that I want it's not as stiff as say a vortex it's about what it takes to turn my uh, loophole VX3 HD throw lever is included one thoughtful thing they did here is you can put your throw lever in any of these holes so wherever you like it to be and wherever it won't interfere with your bolt, you can put it there. Um, really well made, it comes in about 30 ounces, so loophole's always going to have people beat on the, um, on the weight category, but the glass on this thing is every bit as good as my PST Gen 2. Um, it really is exceptional glass. Now, a little bit about Miopta. Uh, they've been around since 1933. They are a Czechoslovakian company, which is kind of cool. This is an opportunity to get into European glass without paying maybe some of the prices you would for the German manufacturers. And I believe that the Zeiss Conquest was manufactured at this facility. They flew off the radar for a long time, largely probably because they were behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, make probably co-opted into making optics for the Soviet military would be my guess But since the fall of that regime they are out and they're making sporting optics for the public um, I think they're kind of a sleeper. I think they're on the come um, I like trying new things too. I really but part of it was that I thought it'd be cool to have like a trans Alps uh, Italian rifle with a Czechoslovakian scope on it. However, I think this is going to end up going on that Remington but That's part of the reason that I got into it read really good reviews. I tried the 10 to uh, the two and a half to uh, 14 is that six times two and a half two and a half to 15 uh, as well but it was a 44 millimeter lens on the objective. It just wasn't a crazy bump up over what I have right? If you're going to spend money on something to upgrade gear, you want to have a market improvement on what you see that you're getting. And this does that probably largely a product of the fact that it is a 50 mil uh, objective. So you're getting six extra mils for light gathering. It's a 30 millimeter tube. They have a good reticle selection. They've got like six or eight reticles. They do have BDC reticles. I like the duplex. They have a couple choices in duplex. Um, and then they have another thing, I think it's called the dichroma, which is an etched reticle that operates, that it somehow absorbs certain wavelengths of light, so it does not require a battery, but it appears in a fashion to be illuminated based on how much light's coming through the scope at different times of day. That looked like it'd be kind of cool, but a lot of my hunting is done at dawn and dusk. The current scope that I'm replacing does not have magnification or illumination, so that was a must-have for me to consider upgrading. Um, these large turret caps, they not quite as big as say on the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 LPVO, but almost. But when you take off the cap, which you could easily do with gloves, then you see that the um, the turret that's itself is actually pretty svelte. Um, I don't know if these are made to roll with them 
uncapped, I suppose you could. They do have a, uh, a zero lock that you have to open it up and reset it. So if you bumped it even, and it, I don't think it would move, but if it did, you could just take it right back to zero and you'd be in business. Like I said, I'll probably zero this thing for maximum point blank range, set it and forget it, and then that 243 is good out to 320. You know, the, it's interesting. They make good reticles, they make good turrets, um, and maybe I'm picky, but I, I like function or features that just makes sense, right? I, I want to have, uh, if I have a duplex and I know I'm gonna dial for my elevation, then I wanna have the, uh, the elevation be exposed. However, if I have a reticle with really good subtensions, I don't need that turret to be exposed. And a lot of times I see duplex reticles, although within a hunting scope, it's not uncommon to have cap turrets, and that's fine. I mean, I, I have a use case for it. But it just, you know, when it comes to common sense, like if you have a really a subtended reticle that's really good, unless it's a tactical rifle or a tactical scope like my PST Gen 2 5 to 25, yeah, then I like the subtensions and I like the dials exposed. But for field stuff, it's just a little bit different. And there's kind of been this trend to have these humongous honking oversized elevation turrets. It's um, And it just like... To me, the vibe looks a little bit off. I mean, I guess it's easier to grab a hold of it and do something, but especially on a rifle that's subtended, I don't think I'm gonna have some kind of dial emergency. Um, really, what shines about this thing is the optical quality. When I'm looking at scopes, um, optical quality to me is paramount, and then everything else is secondary. Then I start thinking about the features and what I want. But if the glass isn't good, you can't fix it. Uh, these are not inexpensive, but they're not beyond uh, what many people could aspire to save to. I am generally uh, like upper middle tier guy. Um, I've never spent over $1,000. on. I've never spent over $800 on glass, but I don't think I've ever spent under, say, $500, right? I'm in that five to $800 range, but what I do, I'm willing to buy a closeout or a older model year scope to try to get more optic for my dollar. So, the PST Gen 2 uh, 5 to 25, the Viper, I like that scope a whole lot. When it came out, it retailed for a thousand or twelve hundred bucks. I got mine for six hundred and fifty bucks. So I'm really reaching to get that thousand dollar optic and pay six, seven fifty. I mean, that's where my sweet spot is. Yours is different. Everybody has their own budget. I just do subscribe to the idea that. Buy, buy nice or you're going to cry twice, right? Buy something good that's going to last, that you like, and then you'll use it and you'll have it a long time. The scope this is going to replace with, has been on that gun for 40 years and I've had it on there for 12. Um, so it's just time to, to upgrade it. Cool company, Czechoslovakian, gets you into European glass. It's something different and the optical quality is really top flight. They have their own factory. They, uh, they're, I think they're really a company that's... that's uh, I mean, I can't say up and coming. They've been in business for almost 100 years. But the word is starting to get out about what these guys do. And the Miopta Mio Pros were wildly popular. And I think they made the glass for a couple of Cabela's model, models that, were, that flew off the shelves. And you don't see them really on the secondary market because people that have them keep them. Really pleased with this. If glass quality is your main concern when you're thinking about buying a scope, um, this should probably be on your list to check out. To get into a comparable loophole, uh, if you want Ill illumination and you want a similar um, type of um, magnification range, I made a couple notes. If you get the VX3 HD, which I have one, I've got the, the like 2 to 7 or 2 to 8 on my lever gun. Great gun, great glass. This is every bit as good, um, if not maybe slightly better. Um, to get into the VX3 HD 4.5 to 14 magnification, so not as big on either the high or the low end, it has no parallax and it's 900 bucks, right? This has the parallax adjustment, has illumination. You could get into the Fire Dot um, Twilight Hunter at loophole, but then you have to go up a notch. Really, to compete with this, at least in far, as far as features go, you've got to step up to the VX5 HD. Um, 3 to 15 times 56, so a slightly bigger bell on that. With parallax and uh, with illumination, you're looking at 1500 bucks. So you're going to spend twice as much money to get that VX5 HD as you will on this, and most people I don't think are going to be able to tell a difference optically. If you're really into the 56mm bell, 
that's where, remember I said that they had a, a bad picture? Um, that's where the exposed elevation turret comes in with the 56 bell, same bells and whistles otherwise, um, slightly more expensive than this. And then if you want to go to um, the 3 to 15 to 44, so smaller objective than this, um, with the same features it's in the loophole VX5 HD, it's 1200 bucks. So even then you're maybe getting a little less and you're paying more. I don't mind trying new companies out. As consumers, we do better when there is more competition out there. And the only way competition can thrive is if people buy a diversity of products. Um, I am not um, married to any one particular brand. I have Vortex scopes, Burris scopes, Loophole scopes. And now I'm proud to say I've got an Optica, a Miopta Optica 6 scope. I think this is going to give me years of use. We'll do some uh, field tests with it and let you know how it is. There's a really great YouTube video. Maybe I'll put the link down below. A guy does a pretty advanced scientific comparison of this uh, Optica 6 directly head-to-head -head against that PST Gen 2, uh, 5 to 25. And um, they, he does a really good job of talking you through glass quality. I might be on, a, on the, the 3 to 15 Vortex, but check out that link as well. He does a great job of showing you the practical differences uh, between the two. I think it's going to be a great scope, well made. Uh, support the Czechoslovakian people a little bit. What the heck, try something new. That's it for now. I will um, be back with you guys. We've got that Burr Signature HD coming with the illuminated Creedmoor reticle uh, in the first focal plane because it is a subtended reticle. That makes a lot of sense. And we'll keep this content coming. So take a sec to like the video. You want a couple practical tips on picking out a rifle scope for yourself, check the link below to my blog post, probably a one-minute read. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you guys being here. Bye.